Hey, welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Koja Kuna and I love drawing. I love drawing so much that I wrote a book about it. Life is better when you draw it. And the title says it all. And if you need a little bit of a nudge towards your creative habit, if you need a little bit of inspiration, then this is the book for you. You need this book. And I've been asked to do a little bit of a flip through of the book on this YouTube channel, which I will do today. And I've been also asked to talk a little bit about the book process because I self published the book. And well, it is a bit of a long story because this took two years from the very beginning to the end, and maybe even more if you think about how much is already simmering in the mind before you start a project. Anyway, let's dive in. I think it was fall 2020 when I started to write. I had a sabbatical and after a few months into the sabbatical, I started to write little bits and pieces. I had no expectations whatsoever. In the back of my mind, there was an idea that maybe at some point in my life, I wanted to write a book, but this didn't have to be it. I just promised myself that as long as I was having fun, I would keep going. And if not, I was okay with that too. But I kept going. And once I had quite a few chapters and I realized that I was actually writing a book, I also realized that writing it in Dutch wasn't making much sense. But hey, that's my language, so that's how I started. So the first investment that I made, financial investment for the book that I made, was actually hiring a translator to translate my not finished and very drafty manuscript into English. And then once I had the translation, that needed a lot of tweaking because my voice and my style of speaking sort of got lost in translation. Then by spring 2021, I was still working on the manuscript, but I was also working on a book proposal because I wanted this book to be published. Now, writing a book proposal is really, really hard. It's a lot harder than writing the book itself. You need to create a document with sample chapters. You need to gather information about other books that are out there. You need to add pictures. It has to look great. Not that hard, but writing a pitch to go into that proposal for the book, that was really, really hard. But in the end, I did it and I had help from friends that are smart and that also helped me breaking things up into smaller pieces because I felt overwhelmed so many times in this whole process. And writing the pitch was really hard, but it also gave me a very strong idea about what this book actually really was. So it was super helpful to write that. I had been in contact with a few editors and I started with one editor that I knew at a publishing company. I sent it to her and she had to reject the book which was very disappointing, but of course I also knew that that could become the outcome. I was in contact with another editor and I sent the proposal and it took ages for them to come back. Summer came and went and then finally, finally I got a reply and of course the book was rejected. And I was super bummed and now you might think, well, you should not put your eggs in one basket. But in the meantime, I was talking with people who had published books and also self-published books. And that was super interesting for me because it made me just really a lot more happier about the whole process, thinking about it. When you self-publish, there's a lot of decisions that you can make and you can do everything on your own time, in your own terms. It just didn't feel right to be sending out book proposals, nervously waiting for an editor at a publishing company to pick it up and maybe offer me a contract. And once I would have that contract, the book would be out in one or two years from then. I mean, I don't even know what I will be doing in two months from now, let alone in two years. Self-publishing a book is quite an interesting project. I kept busy with the creation part of the book, like getting help to edit all the chapters so I could improve all chapters and finalize the manuscript. Also going through all my sketchbooks to find the right images and of course scan them on high resolution so they will look sharp and awesome in the book. That was a lot of work. I also procrastinated on the non-creative stuff. 
I guess I just didn't quite know where to start and I felt a bit overwhelmed by it all. I wasn't planning enough time for it next to the other projects that I had going on because by then I wasn't in my sabbatical anymore. And yes, the inner critic crept up regularly, questioning this whole plan of self-publishing. The inner critic would say, well, all this work you're doing would be done by a publisher instead of you if you'd get a book deal. And what if you can't get the money together in your crowdfunding project? And what if nobody wants this book? Well, luckily I had a growing email list with people who showed interest for the book. So at least I knew I had a small audience for it. And you know, all creative projects come with insecurity and doubt, and that is all okay. It's part of the process. And it really helps to be surrounded by smart people who have experience too, and who can give you little nudges and help you break things apart so that the whole thing doesn't feel too overwhelming, but you can actually break it apart into manageable little steps that you can take. And there were also steps that weren't that much fun. There was so much to figure out. I had to do research to find a printing and distributing company that was the right match for me. I had to analyze shipping costs for countries worldwide and how to keep the costs as low as possible when shipping worldwide. I needed the help of people that I know to spread the word about my book. And I needed to set up a crowdfunding campaign if I wanted to self-publish and print a whole batch of books. And for that crowdfunding campaign, I had to figure out a whole marketing campaign. Also, I was searching for a designer for the inside and the cover of the book, someone who is a match with my style. I had to make sense of the designer proposals that came in and I had to compare and decide. And well, everything took so much time and energy, but making something awesome takes time and energy, right? So I just plowed through all the to-dos and the unknowns, getting out of my comfort zone as part of the learning process. I'd never done anything like this before, but I knew that I could do it as long as I just took my time and that it also would be worth it. To fully understand all the bits and pieces I needed to do for self-publishing, it took a lot of detective work and a big load fell off my shoulders when I finally found the right company to work with for printing and distributing worldwide. I made a concession to not choose offset printing, but digital printing. The big benefit there is that the book can be printed on demand. So when someone buys it, then it's printed and distributed instead of printing a whole batch and then distributing it from that batch. You need to store that. It has a lot of logistical things around it. And because of the print on demand option, there was less of a financial investment there. So I could skip the crowdfunding bit. And that just really was such a relief. It was also a relief to find someone who could design and who understood me. Tosca Lindeboom is a fantastic designer. She got it. And together we worked on the very fun, but also very tough design process for the book. To start, we needed to agree on a concept design, which would be the basis of the whole book. So it needed to be exactly right. We needed to find the right font, colors, ways to combine many drawings with the text, finding the right look and feel for the book. It's really, really hard. And we had a lot of trial and error, and that is all part of it. Deciding on the print on demand option, finding a designer, that was all beginning of this year, 2022. And by February, we had the finalized basic concept for the design. And then Tosca started to work chapter by chapter, combining the text with the sketchbook drawings that I curated. And she would send me a couple of PDFs a week, each time a new version containing all the changes that I asked her to make in previous chapters, as well as a couple of new chapters for me to review. It was a lot of work, but it was very exciting to see the book grow and how she was able to translate the vision that was in my head for this book into an actual book. I also made some illustrations, especially for the book, like stuff to sprinkle into white spaces that could use something extra. And I've been painting a lot of watercolor blobs that we used for backgrounds and for captions, and you will all see them when you have the book. This part of the bookmaking process was really, really fun. And it's so good to be surrounded by people with expertise. 
Tosca is a great designer and I'm so glad that I hired her. But I also got a lot of help from my friend Suzanne Cologne. She's an author and an editor and she's the one who planted the seed of this book in my head. And once I started, she offered to help me editing my manuscript and she did such an amazing job. And she's been by my side all along from her home in New Jersey. And without her, the book would not have been the great read that it is now. It might not have come to existence at all. By the end of April, we were getting a little bit closer to be done, but then I had this crazy fit of my inner critic telling me that it was all wrong and we had to do everything different. And I almost told Tosca to just start again from scratch. Luckily, she's an expert and a professional and she told me to just sleep on it. <laughs> And I was really, for a moment, I was a client from hell, I think. But she kept calm and she knows that also this kind of fits. Like, it's all wrong and no, we have to do it all different. It's part of the process. And I'm really glad that she just left it for a bit. And then after a weekend, I was like, okay, I'm ready to move on. So... <laughs> thankful to have good people around me. Between April and June, there was just editing, editing, editing. Pictures and words and commas. And we were checking off if we were still following our style guide. So the concept for the design was also the style guide for the way of writing things. Here and there, we made some radical changes. I cut out a whole chapter of the book. I glued together a few paragraphs to um, make more sense of all of it. I took out drawings that I really, really love, but they just didn't quite balance it out. All these decisions and tweaks were made throughout the process. There's so much tweaking and polishing and changing and polishing. It's crazy. But with each round of proofreading and changing and polishing, it just got better and better. And then halfway June, I had the first proof of the book, the printing proof, so I could hold it in my hand. And strange enough, I wasn't as excited because I had seen it so many times in so many PDFs. I was like, yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it needed quite a few changes. The paper was too flimsy. The design needed a little bit of uh, something. So we got back to work again. And we also did one more final, final, final round of proofreading. And then in July, I got the second proof print. It looked awesome. Then I started to feel it because we were so close to being done. Just a few things needed to change, really tiny tweaks. And then I could actually get the document onto the system for publishing. The print-on-demand service that I chose for self-publishing my book, a British company called Book Vault connected to the Great British Bookshop, they have a system for publishing. You have to go through the process of setting the title up for retail. And that retail setup part was complicated and a little bit nerve wracking, but I got through it. And once I hit the button publish, it felt amazing. It would take 24 hours before it would actually be loaded onto the great British bookshop, but then it was out of my hands. The printing and the distribution was all going to happen and people could buy the book. The book was launched just like that. It took a few weeks before it was also connected to all the other retailers like Amazon, but now the book is available to be sent worldwide, anywhere. Yay! In the first couple of weeks after the book came out, I felt a mix of excitement, pride. I actually wrote a book, validation, and also a little bit of now what? <laughs> but mostly I was and I still am so very happy that people can buy it and read it and that I get fantastic feedback from readers and that just makes me really really happy. The book is available as print on demand as I said. It means that for me as a self-publishing author I don't need to worry about storage, handling, inventory and shipping. And it also means that it's not available in bookshops worldwide. 
As soon as you order it online, a copy of the book will be printed and shipped to you. I am adding a link below and on that page you can find all the links where the book can be bought. And shipping costs, yeah, I know. Taxes too, because of Brexit. I am bummed about that too, but if you want this book, you want this book. And maybe you can look at it this way. The book is like taking a workshop with me, only it's at your own home, at your own pace, in the comfort of your lazy chair maybe, and you can get back to it any time. So if you look at it that way, it's kind of a bargain, right? Well, whatever, I'm not going to defend how this book is sent and what it will cost. It costs what it costs. It's done, it's out there and it's worth it. It was worth all the work and effort and money I put in it. And what I hear from people who have ordered it, and there's many of them already, which is fantastic. They love the book, so it's worth it. Holidays are right around the corner, so you might just be in time to get the book, order it for yourself or gift it to a friend who is creative or who needs a little nudge. I really hope that you will help spreading my book around the world and that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this long video and for looking into my book. I will see you next week with a new Draw Tip Tuesday. And well, what are you still doing here? You should go draw. Draw. Bye.